Hey everybody, it's your old pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, and this is Monday Minutes. I just got back from the Pacific Northwest Clap Mini with a just a wonderful group of people up there, and some topics came up, and one of which is something I'm going to cover today. And it was also fielded in a poll I put out in my Facebook group, uh, Extreme Sequences Syndicate, that asked, what are some things that you'd really like to see in a Monday Minutes? And since this came up also at this mini in Seattle, I figured, you know what, let's do this and let's create a little bit of clarity. There's a lot of changes happening in x Lite, some things that have happened that I'm going to be talking about uh, quite a bit more over the coming weeks. But this one I think is really important. If you're one of these people, one of these enthusiasts that purchase other people's sequences or get shares and you're trying to make rhyme and reason of how do I map what to what and how do I organize this in x lights? The first thing we have to be cognizant of is there are so many ways to achieve the same result in x lights that it makes it confusing for most people to try to figure out which way to go. And so many of you will buy pixels from XYZ vendors and Coro and sequences and whatnot, controllers, power supplies, you name it, across the board. And that's fantastic. But uh, Coro comes from various vendors. So I have a few different pieces here. I have, um, let's see, what do I have here at the top? I have Rosa Grande from Gilbert Engineering and then Fusion, and then I have these three center flakes, okay? So Gilbert Engineering is what I mostly use in my layout. I've been working with them for a lot of years and we work well together and we just enjoy uh, the hobby immensely. Another one over here that you might not have seen, unless you're from Europe, is this wonderful Crown Jubilee. And this was created by Build a Light Show, and they sell this from Build a Light Show. So I have put this in here as well. Uh, to the top left, we have ourselves the Ice Queen from Boscoyo. On the right, I believe this is the EFL, what is it called? Showstopper Snowflake. Folks, if these videos are helping you along your journey in x lights please feel compelled to hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel as it helps me continue building these sequence tutorials and x lights tutorials for a better enjoyment for all of you to learn and expand your knowledge in x lights I hope it does help. Thanks so much. And below on the bottom two centers, will be, uh, this is the Fusions again from Gilbert Engineering. And then right over here, I don't know much about this company, but this is a Frozen Flake from Custom Creations, I believe is the name. Okay, fair enough. So I have put my typical models and groups in a view. Okay, so what does that mean? What's a view mean? Okay, let me save this. Well, when you're sequencing and you have a sequence or animation sequence open, you have all these little things here to the left called models and submodel groups, as well as timings above that. And you can see up here, I have a view called Extreme Sequences View. So this will have everything that I have in my show. Okay. That's great if you only have what I have in my show, in your show. But what if you have a Boscoyo flake or something from another vendor? Well, you got to think about this because what are the chances there are multiple sequence vendors that will have the same models from various uh, providers of coral? It's probably pretty good. I mean, there are some camps out there. Don't get me wrong. But there are some of the uh, sequence vendors that use multiple across the board. And the challenge is a lot of them are all created differently. Some will use submodel groups with, you know, spoke one, spoke two, spoke three, spoke four, all the way to spoke 50 in a group. That's how we've been doing it for eight years, it seems like, seven years. Uh, some people will do it where, where spoke one, two, three, four, all the way through 50 is just one group for that model itself. They're all clumped in together. And um, there's a dev out there that's done some pretty interesting things that we're going to be uh, looking at in the coming days that uh, sort of make it very interesting. And I think is going to make it a lot easier for the coral providers or the people that create submodels. It's going to give them, um, I think it's going to save them a lot of time and maybe give them some more creative freedom. So I'm looking forward to that. 
But let's get back to this group thing. When we right click on this area, we can click edit display elements. You can also click right up here on this guy here, which is the same thing, edit display elements. And this will open up this big window here. Okay, what's very important here is that everything on the left is what's possible to pull over to any number of views you may have. Currently, this is the sequence view. If I wanted to pull any of these over to this sequence view, which is extreme sequences, I could certainly do that. As I add more props and models, whatnot, I can bring those over. But what if you have some of these things on the right, or you just picked up something from custom creations and you want to add that, okay? Or what if... Uh, what if XYZ sequence vendor uses the same props, but they put their model groups in different orders or their submodel groups in different orders. And that's the way they like the sequence. And perhaps if you use my order and it's not the same with their order and you start mapping things in, it might not look right. So let's fix that. All right. This is very, very, very simple. What we're going to do here, let's assume that you have all of my models already and that you're using verts, eaves, windows. I have a flakes group, flakes arms, flakes spokes, flakes outline. I've got a tree and an all pixels group. All pixels group always at the top, please. So all we have to do here is we can clone this right over here on the far top right. Click on clone. That'll copy everything over. And so let's call this uh, oh, copy cat uh, sequences. <laughs> it just sounds like a good name. And click OK. Now, from here, we can start adding other things. So perhaps they have the Crown Jubilee. So in this case here, there are several things in the Crown Jubilee, which would be the Crown Jubilee group. So let's just put this and we'll put it right on top of the Rosa Grande to push that down. And then I will grab all of these other groups. And we're going to assume that these are in the correct order. I'm going to drag it right there on top of the Rosa Grande. I do not need the individual Crown Jubilee because that should be in the Crown Jewel group. Right? Or or is it? We'll find out soon enough. So I'm going to just arrow that over. Uh, let's say that they also have the Ice Queen. So let's put that over here right above Crown Jewels. And they have a Showstopper. And then let's say that they also picked up a Frozen Flake from Custom Creations. Boom. All right. So they're buying from everybody. They love this. They love that. They're going to mix it up. Perfect. Here you go. If you like this and you've called this copycat sequences, whatever company this may represent, that's good enough. That's all I have to do. And we could get out of this, or we could make this the master view. Now, it's very important that before you start importing from copycat sequences, that you make sure that you make copycat sequences the master view. And you do that by going over here and clicking on this Make master. Cool. Okay. And I'll click X here. A lot of times I'm in the habit of going to my layout and just clicking save because it's red. And we come back over here. And now what we will see in this master view is that hierarchy that we just created. So here's the flakes group, flakes outline, ice queen, showstopper, uh, center snowflake, which is from custom creations, and then everything else. Oh, oh, I see what's happened here. It looks like the whole thing just opened up. That's really interesting. Uh, okay. Is there any way around that? I guess there's not any way around that. I don't know. That's not how I would do it, but it doesn't matter how the sequencer does it. What matters is, will you have a view that will work so that when you map and hit the auto map, everything goes into place. That is so, so important. Okay. So the nice thing about submodels or models that you get from downloading from X lights that have submodels, they're typically in the correct order. And all you have to do is hit auto map and it brings them all over and puts them in that order. Okay. 
So that's a good thing to know. But again, I'm going to reiterate, if the sequencer is putting their submodels in a, a specific order that's different for the way they like the sequence, then we have no consistency. So I urge you to create your very own view and use that view, whether it's the master view is the only view that x -Lights ever looks at, it's just you're telling any one of these views to be that view, okay? Very, very, very important to make your mapping life a lot easier. Now, if you're a sequencer, go at it. Do anything you like, there are no rules, unless you're going to be selling your sequences and just be prepared to take on those calls. How do I do this? Why does it not map? What's wrong with my candy canes? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's good. Drop a line in the comments. Let me know questions you have. I want to try to help you as much as I can. There's a lot of good content. Next week, look for something pretty interesting that uh, expands on this quite a bit. And I hope this has been helpful. This hobby should be fun. I would love to say this hobby should be easy, but it's not. But is the juice worth the squeeze? Darn tootin' it is. See ya.